let's all get our hymns this evening. Stand the same page number 398. 398. back this evening. Amen. We uh, need to take just a moment and acknowledge and remember Brother Robert and Darlene has an anniversary tomorrow. So call them and wish them a happy anniversary. They should be watching in tonight. So happy anniversary to Brother Robert and Miss Darlene. Many, many, many years. I don't know how many, many, many years it is, but it's many, many, many years. And I know that because that's what Scott told me. Amen. I got to get somebody else thrown in there with me. So, All right. Give them a buzz. Let them know. And uh, I think Brother Rick and Miss Angela is going to sing us a couple. i 
don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. And to me, that's all that matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me.
need to thank the Lord. I don't praise him enough and thank him enough. Not just at Thanksgiving, but every day I failed him. I desperately need prayers as far as my spiritual um, walk with God. My heart was so full this morning just seeing all the visitors and um, seeing my family. It's not just him that's with you during the hard times, during the good times, but your family as well. And I consider my church as my family, and I just thank the Lord for all of you. Thank him for being good to me when I just, just don't deserve it.
Amen. Nah, it ain't far. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Such a blessing to see a good number. And uh, good to see a lot of our folks out here. My Brittany's crowd's had the sickness, so they've stayed away today. And, of course, Matthew's involved out yonder. Redemption and helping with things on Sunday. And. Uh, Stephanie's up yonder in Lenore, so it is a good little drive up there, but uh, uh, Miss Jeanette, that's not far. I mean, they, that Walmart, and then just a couple more minutes, and you're here, so it's not that far away. We'd sure love to have them to uh, be here with us. Amen. Be a blessing. Be a real blessing to have them over here with us. Amen. Amen. God's good, and I'm thankful for all his goodness. Amen. And uh, thank you all for the good hard work and all that went into this morning, the good meal, and uh, the turkeys and the ham, and not you, the real turkey, <clears throat> the turkeys and the ham that we had today. Uh, I'm thankful for all the work that went into that. Brother Mike done a great job in fixing, uh, deep frying the one, and somebody else fixed another one, and it was all good. Amen. Uh, amen. I was thinking about eating some chicken after a while, and I realized somebody else was eating it all up, so I uh, probably won't get no more, but uh, it was good this morning. <laughs> amen. There was a few pieces left. I don't know what's back there now, but uh, I will probably be looking at it after a while <clears throat> if there is anything. I don't eat the bones, so it wouldn't be much left probably, but uh, anyway. Glad God's able to provide the needs of others. I'm picking at Scott, if y'all don't know. Uh, he was back there eating on chicken leg a while ago. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, thank the Lord. It was good. Good crowd this morning. What we end up with, 69, 71, something? About 69 folks this morning, so that was a real blessing. And uh, I enjoyed the good singing. Uh, I'd camp ambles out here all the time, too, if they... If, uh, if I could, but uh, they, they do a great job, and I appreciate their spirit and the songs they sang, uh, good old-fashioned singing, and it, it, it's, uh, it's good for you. It'll help you, amen? That's the kind of stuff that'll help you in the, in the dark, deep valleys, and that's, that's what I want. I, 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 I don't care about making a name. I don't care about performance. I'm about getting help and uh, helping those about us, so I'm thankful for God and His goodness this morning. Uh, nothing else from anyone. We will move into our scripture this evening. I, I, uh, I struggle with this. Y'all know that. I tell you that. Uh, but I have a, a, a familiar passage tonight, and I want to take you back there in Mar uh, Matthew chapter 14. Uh, Jesus uh, walking on the water to the disciples and, and Simon Peter's faith. And, and that's just what the Lord laid in my heart and what I want to share with us this evening. Uh, so if you don't mind, just for a, a few moments, uh, turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 14 and verse number 22 through uh, 31. We'll read that this evening and uh, draw a few things out of that, not a normal uh, outline that I use, but uh, just a few thoughts that the Lord uh, laid in my heart that I want to share with you this afternoon. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, the Bible says, And straightway Jesus 
constrained the disciples to get into the ship, into a ship, and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the, the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come down, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to, the, to Jesus. Uh, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and being uh, beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I ask you for your help again this evening. Thank you for the good service today, Lord. You've blessed us much and the good singing and helping us with the Word of God today, touching hearts and ministering to them. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the good crowd of folks that's come back to be with us tonight. I pray thy blessings on each and every one. Meet the needs of every heart. And the Lord, as Miss Sue mentioned a few moments ago in her testimony, uh, Lord, the desire of a heart for her children, I, I pray that God, you, would move in their heart and lead them where you'd have them to be. Give them a good church home. Lord, be thy will, we'd ask that you'd bring them here. But we just want thy will to be done. We pray for others that's here with us tonight, those that do not know the Lord as their Savior. I pray that you'll deal with their heart. Help them to see thy love for them and their need for repentance. And God, give, it, give them that they need. In Jesus' name, we do ask it all. Again, be with those that cannot be here tonight, those that's watching with us. Lord, I pray thy blessings on them, our sick and afflicted. Uh, Lord, please touch and help them, Brother Robert, Miss Gail, and uh, others, Lord, that's in great need. I pray that you touch them and uh, be with them and bless them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I know that it's a familiar passage, and you know me. I always struggle going back to one that's familiar. To me, it seems like I just preached on it, but for you, I'm sure it's been some time, uh, but in my studies and all. And what the Lord is working in my heart, I want to share with you a little bit this evening. <clears throat> and then I don't know, I tried to settle on a little title, you know, that way you can sort of title it, keep it in your, in your sermon files and sort of know when you dealt with something in this same area. But uh, I was looking at, at how the Lord deals with Simon Peter and the other disciples in this passage and, and maybe some thoughts on teaching out of troubles or teachings out of troubled times would be maybe a title there. But you know, oftentimes we ask ourselves, or I do, why troubles? Why do we have troubles like we do? Why do we have to go through these troubled times? What's the reasoning behind it? And when you look at this passage here, you see that God uh, pinned down this particular incident to show us some things or to teach us some things as he taught Simon Peter. Now, you know that Simon Peter is reading your Bibles. You know that in the future, Simon Peter is going to be one of the, the leaders of the church, the early church as he got started and things was going on. Simon Peter was a, a very boisterous young man. Uh, he spoke much, uh, very loud, uh, <clears throat> so to speak. As I said, I feel like I'm first cousin to him. And um, a lot of things he did, a lot of the ways he did things, I... I can identify with him, and that's why I say that I'm, I'm probably real near kin to him, uh, if, not in, if not in blood, but in action, amen. But since we're brothers in the Lord, I can claim kinship that way. But when you look at the troubled times that they go through, I, I just pinned down a few things back there this afternoon that, that the Lord showed me about 
he was teaching some things in these troubled times. Now, the first thing that I see that stands out in this, you, you see the Lord has constrained them to get in the ship. They go out in the ship. The Lord goes up in the mountain to pray. And then it says that there was a storm that hit them in verse 24. But when the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. So you see that they're in a troubled storm, or a trouble of a storm. But then when they really got troubled, you see in verse 26, was when Jesus come walking on the water. And when I thought about that, I thought, you know, here is... They have fear of an unknown situation. Somebody's walking on the sea. They're just not sure who it is. So it's an unknown situation that's brought fear on them. And you know, it's, it's terrible that we're geared this way. It's, it's bad that we're fixed up this way. But isn't it, isn't it common for us that when an unknown situation is approaching us, we get fearful. We don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't know what it is. We don't know who it is in this passage. We just don't know what's going to take place. And God help us all to learn from Simon Peter's mistake. It's better to learn from the mistake of others than to make your own. Amen. Isn't, isn't it worthy for us to learn here to not fear the unknown? How many of you have went to a doctor's office, had some tests done, and before you get the good results back, you are in fear? We look at it as if automatically it's going to be bad. Because if it's a good report, we're not going to be in fear, right? If it's a good report, we're going to say, yay, I'm in good shape. But normally when they do the drawing of the blood or the taking of the pictures and stuff of that nature, we, we usually react with a fearful looking unto an unknown situation. Here's Simon Peter and the other disciples. They're troubled because there's somebody walking on the water and they don't know who it is. Can I ask you all a question? Who could it be? Walking on the water. He's walking on the water. Who else could it be? <laughs> but here we go. Trouble's walking on the water. We're, we're troubled because of somebody walking on the water. Can I tell y'all something? There's no need in fear in ghosts. I've never in my life, I'm 58, never in my life have I had a ghost bother me. And I've been around a few. And those of you that's thinking I'm a little crazy, come on over here to the church one day and I'll prove it to you. You can say amen, Clarence. It's okay. This I said you could. I mean, I mean, really, it, 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 it's, there's, there's spirits, ghosts out there. And, and, and I've encountered it a time or two. Now, I've encountered some bad spirits. I've been around some, and I'm like, Lord, you need to get this thing away from me. I don't know who it is, what it is, but it got to go. We was in the, in the Mall of America, and y'all know Miss Judy likes to shop a little bit. I'm talking about a, was it five stories? I can't remember whether it's four or five stories tall. Y'all think the Hickory Mall or the Winston Mall or something, and it's only two stories. This rascal was five stories, I believe. It had a fair, like Troutman Fair, the Ireland County Fair, inside this place. That's how big it is. I don't know how big number-wise it is, but it's huge. I mean, they had a Ferris wheel thing, you know, where the wheel goes around and around. It's got two of them, and they alternate going up. Just in case y'all don't know, it had one of them things inside the mall. That's how big it is. And there's some evil spirits up in that place so bad that the women come to us and said, hey, guys, we're ready to go. We're done. We can't stand this evil spirit feeling. I mean, but, but, but they've never bothered me. They can't possess me because I'm saved and sealed by the Holy Ghost. They can talk to you and aggravate you a little bit, but, you know, they can't bring the harm there. I'm, I'm saved and sealed by the Holy Ghost. I belong to the Lord. Now, if you ain't saved, you got something to worry about. They can possess you, overtake you, and cause you to do things that 
uh, you're going to wish to God in heaven you had never done. Amen. That's, that's the wickedness of the evil spirits. But we, we fear unknown situations. Listen, when in the will of God we have no reason to fear every little thing that we don't know or, un, or see or understand. When you're in the will of God, you're in the will of God. You don't have to fear everything that you don't know. What, what about Abraham trusting God with Isaac when he went up on the mountain? He didn't know how it was all going to come out, but he knew it was going to come out all right. Before he went up the mountainside, he told them other fellows that was with him, the other servants, he told them, said, we'll be back. We usually means at least two, right? I'm not an English scholar. I'm asking. So if it was just him coming back, he'd have said, I'll be back in a minute. But he said, we'll be back. That means more than one, right? Okay. So I didn't want to make sure I got it right. So Abraham already knew before he went up the mountain that God was going to deliver and everything's going to be all right. And then he gets up on the mountain, he's going to offer a sacrifice, and it's going to be his son. And he still trusts God that it's going to be all right. But we don't always understand how everything's going to work out. But we can trust God that it's going to work out right when we're in God's will. You know, fear usually comes when we're not right with God. When we're not fully trusting God. See, in the, in, the, in the closing of this little thought right here, it tells you there was a problem in Simon Peter's heart. He's doubting a little bit. Just a little bit, but it's enough. He's doubting enough it sank him. Hello? So, there's enough there. Hey, what about Moses' mother trusting the Lord, put her little son in a basket in the, in the Nile River, which is alligator's uh, haven, Amen. She trusted the Lord. She didn't know what all was going to turn out. She just knew God said it's going to be all right. God put it in her heart to make a little ark of bulrushes and set the baby in it. I don't know about y'all, but I'd have a hard time with that. Pushing my little, my little youngin down the, the river, and, 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 and I'm telling you, I'd have trouble with that, knowing that it's got alligators and stuff. I don't even like getting near the water that's got alligators in a boat. We was down in, uh, where was we at? Waycross, Georgia. And a fella took us out on a boat one day. And they got, they got canals cut, channels cut, little waterways cut in the middle of all that swamp land down there. We were riding down through there just enjoying the hound out ourselves. He said something about seeing the gators. And I thought, huh, what did you just say, sir? I ain't got my gun on me, y'all. And when you commence to looking at the bank, which ain't very far away from you, that's not a bunch of logs laying over there. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about? And we weigh out yonder in the water. And it ain't one of them things where you fire off a motor and pew, right back to the shore real quick. I'm like, oh, my heavens, what have I done got up into now? And I usually try to be the brave boy in the bunch, but I will tell you, I was a little bit on the nervous side with this deal. There's gators everywhere. But as long as we stay in the boat, we okay, we, we, we think. Y'all ever seen a gator turn a boat over? If they get bad hungry, you got troubles, you hear me? But see, here, here, here Moses, his mother, trusted the Lord, put little Moses in the ark of bulrushes, and God took care of everything. Moses later, later on comes to the Red Sea, and he delivers the children of Israel across that. They didn't really know what all was going to go on with a wall of water on each side of them. How long is he going to hold? What if this crowd don't hurry up? I mean, now listen, God bless y'all. I know all of y'all have got, all y'all got great patience, right? Now, could you imagine? Think about it just a minute. Let's say you're the thousand and three person that's going to cross the river. So you've got a thousand other Red Sea, thousand other folks plus two that's in front of you, and you're halfway across. Now, I know some of you. You're going to be pushing and passing the other folks.
with a wall of water on each side of you, I'm sure enough, sure, you're going to be heaping on the cross through there. You're not going to trust the Lord to hold that water. Listen, he done told the whole crowd to cross over. If you're a thousand and three, and there's two and a half million of you that's got a cross, if you're the thousand and third person there, you're in good shape. Because there's a whole bunch more folk behind you coming that he's got to hold the wall for. Now, if you're the, if you're the two and a half million minus one, you might have to wish they hurry up. Could you imagine being the caboose in that parade? Because the next and behind you is Pharaoh's crowd. And we know that the Lord's going to drop the waters in on Pharaoh's crowd. <laughs> so if you're the last one in that bunch, yeah, you might, you might get an excuse for being a little bit fearful. But I don't think if you're a thousand and three, you ought to be excused. You, you, you ought not be fretting. God's going to bring the whole crowd over. See, the Lord, the Lord told this crowd, he put them in a boat, and he says to go before him to the other side. Y'all know what that means? Can I put that in country terms so you can get that, Scott? He coming to. When he says go before him, he, what he's saying is, Y'all go ahead, I'm coming to. That sort of means that you're going to make it to the other side. Whether some ghost walks up on the water at you or not, you're going to make it to the other side because I'm coming to meet you. See, sometimes this unknown stuff bothers us. Now, I know it probably didn't bother y'all, but 35 years ago, I'd done this unknown thing. I'd never done it before. I didn't, I didn't really know, you know, I'd watch some other folks go through it. Some of them done good and some of them didn't. I didn't really know how, how good this is all going to work out. And I was standing there before the preacher, and, 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 and I'm supposed to say I do to something that I don't know a whole lot about. Never had been there yet before. Ain't never done it. Is that good country? That's good enough, ain't it? That's not something I'd participated in before. I was a little bit on the nervous side of the unknown. How, 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 how's all this going to work? A, 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 am I going to be able to feed her? And then what, what, if, what, if, what, if, what, if, what if some little ones comes along? How am I going to be able to feed all them? Because if they like the rest of the family, they're going to want to eat pretty much. Isn't that an unknown? See, we live in a world today that's there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of moms and dads that sort of wonders, what am I going to do about tomorrow? How, if, if, if Biden stays in administration much longer, how in the world am I going to be able to feed my family? Can I give you all an answer tonight? It's Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. And the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things I'll add unto you. Now, you need to write that down or go read it regularly so that you can memorize that. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things in that chapter that he's talking about is, I'm going to give you clothes to wear and food to eat. You're going to be all right. But, 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 a, a, a gas shortage and a diesel shortage and, and a food shortage and, a, and, a, and a, our money's just, and, 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 and I know, it's okay. Biden ain't God. God is still on the throne. God is still going to feed his youngins. See, there was a, there's a group of them that went through a seven-year famine. And we worry about just tomorrow. Y'all hearing me tonight? We get, we get tore up about the unknown or how we're going to make it to Christmas. And they went through a seven-year prophesied, seven-year famine's coming. What if, what if the Lord was to let us know, hey, listen, children, don't you let you know, let you know something tonight. The next seven years, you, it's going to be a famine. Now how bad a butterflies we going to have? Trust the Lord. 
He can't lie, and he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You're going to trust him or you ain't. See, what happens to us is we have a fear of the unknown. That's what's going on with Simon here. He don't know who that is walking on the water. Good gravies. We're in a boat that's in the midst of a storm. If that guy can walk on the water, he's a good one. Don't you reckon? See, we have that fear of the unknown. So they're getting some teachings out of the troubles. It's okay. God's, God's there. But then you look at verse number 28. And, and, and Simon Peter's now talking with the Lord because the Lord says, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. They've heard that phrase of, of words before. They've heard that voice before. Just a few hours ago, that same voice talked to them, said, Get in there and go to the other side. I'll see you in a little while. But Simon Peter says, Lord, if it's you, what do you mean if? Now, bless you ladies, but I, I promise you, I'm not going to get your voice confused with that one. I know her voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. John chapter 10. Why is Simon Peter saying, if it's you? Is he putting the conjunction, is he, is he putting the question rather on, on me coming to you? Or is the question on who are you? See that factor of the unknown and now he's questioning. See, folk, what we need to do is learn to take the Lord at his word. We, we need to trust the Lord at his word. Jesus has just spoken to Simon Peter. And Peter is still saying he's unsure it's the Lord. Oftentimes we hear his voice, yet we question whether it's him or not. Now deep down, is he using this phrase to uh, maybe get the Lord to tell him, come on out there because he wants to be better than the other disciples and walk on the water? You know, Peter did have a little bit of a problem with pride. He did always want to be better than them and do more than them and so on and so forth. Because, you know, when the Lord's talking to him about forsaking, Simon Peter says, though the rest of them forsakes you, I'll not. Remember that? So that's a little bit of who Simon Peter is. So maybe that's factioned into this just a little bit. I don't know. But regardless, when the Lord says, be a good cheer it is I, he should have took him at his word. So one of the other teachings in this problem of troubles is you need to take the Lord at his word. Didn't he say he's going to take care of us? Didn't he say that he'd supply our every need according to his riches and glory? Didn't he say... <clears throat> That his grace is sufficient. Regardless of how low the valley, how deep the ditch, how much trouble, how much problem would come our way. Did he not tell us that I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Church, God help us to take him at his word. So one of the teachings and troubles is we need to learn to trust him and take him at his word. Trust his word. Verse 28 and 29. We, 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 ought, to, we ought to trust him. Oftentimes we hear his voice, but we then sometimes doubt. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm raising my hand. I'm guilty right there because sometimes he'll speak things, and I, I question, Lord, now if that's really you, you know, do this. Well, you wanted to hear his voice. You wanted him to speak to you. You wanted him to lead you. You wanted him to give you something. He did, and now you're going to question that. Lord, help us. Lord, help me to take him at his word. Help me to trust his word. See, the Lord says to Simon to come to him. He's calling Simon Peter to him. Why should Simon Peter doubt that the Lord would handle the trip's necessities? Why should Simon Peter doubt the Lord's ability to handle and cover the trip's necessities? If he's calling you to him, he's going to take care of whatever it takes to get there. Hello? You... you, you. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm talking about here? When you, when you look at what's going on here, we need to trust the Lord as word. When the Lord, when the Lord said, come, he's going to take care of all that's necessary for Simon Peter to come to him when Simon steps out on the water. And the Bible does say that Simon walked on the water. Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, 
He walked on the water. Write that down. Don't ever forget it. He walked on the water just like the Lord said for him to do. What happened? There's a problem that comes up here. See, he begins to not take the Lord as his word. The Lord's trying to teach Simon, you need to trust my word. I said, come here, and, and you was coming. But next lesson he learns here is to keep his eyes on the Lord, particularly during troubled times. There's where we get in trouble. Because a lot of times, in the midst of our troubles, we'll get our eyes off of the Lord and begin to look at our troubles. And that's when Simon began to sink. See, the Lord's teaching in this time of trouble to keep your eyes on me. Focus on me. Judy, Judy cuts up with a little clay when she's dealing with him on some things, and she'll say something like, eyes on me. And what she's doing is she's cutting a little jingle at him, cutting up with him, so that he'll look at her and, and she can teach him or deal with him in whatever he's doing. One, two, three eyes on me. That's what it is. One, two, three, eyes on me. She's wanting Clay to look at her so she can instruct him in learning something. See, Simon gets out of the boat, starts walking across there on the water, and instead of keeping his eyes on the Lord, he begins to look at the troubles. He begins to look at the sea. He begins to look at the storm. He begins to see how high the waves are, and when that happens, he begins to sink. See, what the Lord teaches us out of this passage is in the times of trouble, you ought to keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't get mad at him and upset that trouble will come and turn from him because there's more to it than just this. We're going somewhere else in just a minute, but right now he's trying to teach us just to keep our eyes on him. When the trouble comes, we need to look to Jesus. When we've got problems in our life, we need to focus on the Lord. Not on the storm. Don't be looking at the storm. That storm ain't going to help you. All it's going to do is cause you more trouble. When trying to help a child out of a dangerous situation, we want them to keep their eyes on us. Some time back, one of the grandchildren was up in a tree. He went up so high, he didn't realize how high he was until he got up so high and then he couldn't come down. He was hung up there. And then he got to looking down how far it was and he got scared to move. Well, the others come and got me and said, Papa, you're going to have to go help, uh, uh, I'll not say his name, but one of the grandkids is up the tree and can't get down. And I'm like, wait a minute, he went up it. How come he can't come down it? That don't make sense to me. Let me see what's it. So I go out there and talk to him. Well, he's looking at the ground. So what I had to do was get him to focus on me and then me help him walk down. And I had to get him to trust me. I said, all right, just slide your foot on down. There's a limb right below you. Just slide your foot. Look at me. Slide your foot on down, and he gets scared. I said, trust me now. Slide your foot on down. There's a limb right there. Just trust me. Y'all hearing me? Ain't that the way the Lord does to us? He's saying, come on, I've got you. It's okay. Just trust me. Take another step. You're going to be all right. There's, there, there you go. Come on. Just trust me. There's, there's, there you go. Come on. And he has to talk to us as we do with children to keep our focus on him and trust him and just walk. And he'll take care of everything else. I don't, I don't, know, what, I don't know what I'm going to be in five years if I live that long, ten years if I live that long. That uncertainty, that unknown. Oh, my goodness, I could sit and fret and fear and get in all kind of bad shape. Really? I don't know. Well, I don't got to know. Why don't I got to know? Because he knows. And as long as I stay focused on him, and trust him. He'll lead me where I need to go. He'll take care of what's needed there. See, we've got to learn in troubled times to trust the Lord. We've got, we got to learn that in our troubled times to keep our focus on him, to keep our eyes on the Lord. It can get rough sometimes, children, but we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Another thing we learn out of this passage here with Simon Peter is Talk to the Lord in times of troubles or testing. You know, they had conversation going on. Things was, you know, going on. They learned a little bit uh, with the feed of the 5,000 just hours ahead of this situation here. Uh, they, they talked to the Lord as they were getting ready to get in the boat and head out. You know, I'm sure they said, bye, Lord, love you. I'll talk to you in a little while. We'll see you on the other side or whenever you get to us. You know, I'm sure they was talking to him then. But trouble comes. 
And Simon Peter's in the midst of a storm, and they, they cry out for fear. Who'd they cry to? What'd they cry? What, did they just scream in terror? What, what did the disciples, when they, they cried out for fear, what'd they say? That's when he's going under. They're, 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 they're troubled. They don't, know what, they don't know what to do. They cry out in fear. And the Lord recognizes it and he says, uh, <clears throat> Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now remember this. The storm has not stopped when he said that. The storm does not stop until he steps in the boat. The storm don't stop till he steps in the boat. Simon steps out of the boat to come to the Lord while the storm is raging, remember? Because on his way to the Lord, he gets his eyes off the Lord, sees the storm, and he goes down. So the storm rages from the time Jesus is seen walking on the water until he steps into the boat. But there's a principle here you need to get a hold of. Just talk to God. Talk to God during the testing time. Talk to God during the trouble time. Simon Peter's out there walking on the water. Storms are raging. Gets his eyes off Jesus. Sees the storm and begins to sink. What's he do? Lord, save me. What's he doing? He's talking to the Lord. Learn to talk to the Lord in testing times, troubled times, and triumphant times. Y'all just talk to him all the time. I know people are going to think you're crazy. They probably already do anyway, so it ain't going to change things. Just talk to the Lord. It's okay. He's your friend. He's your Lord. He's your master. It's okay to talk to him. Now, some people praise in their, in their heart and mind, don't say much stuff out loud. And then other folks, as they talk to the Lord, they, they sort of whisper a little bit. I've seen folks in the midst of troubles, they'll just sort of whisper a little prayer. That's okay. Or you can just flat talk to him and say, Lord, you know, i got to have some help over here. I've got trouble. Hey, listen, church, I'm not ashamed to let folk know that he is my helper. I'm not ashamed to let folk know that, hey, I don't mind calling on him. If something ain't right, uh, uh, rather than cussing, it's better to call on the Lord. Amen. Some folk will get mad and kick whatever's tore up. Can I ask y'all a question? Y'all ever had that happen? Anybody ever got mad at what tore up and, and, and pitched a fit at it? Did it help? Did it fix it? But it sure enough hurt something else, didn't it? When you So what's better to do? Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I got to have some extra help here. This thing done broke. This thing done messed up. This situation's got bad. I need some help. That's what Simon Peter said. So teaching in troubles teaches us to talk to the Lord. You reckon maybe the Lord done that a little bit on purpose? Try to teach Simon Peter some stuff. Now you got to remember, church. Simon Peter is going to be one of the main pillars of the church in just a few days. We're in Matthew 14. Just a few days, Simon Peter is going to be one of the primary leaders of the church. So the Lord's trying to put him through a little crash course here. You know, he only gets maximum three and a half year seminary with Jesus Christ himself. So learn to talk to the Lord during troubles and testings. Simon steps out on the water as the Lord has told him come, and he goes to the Lord. The storm rages. The Bible says, verse 30 says, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Doubting God's ability to bring us to him brings tragedy. In the midst of your troubles, when you call for the Lord, your doubting will bring tragedy. Simon doubted, and Simon began to sink. Talk to the Lord and trust the Lord. Take the Lord at his word. He said he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. Listen, church, we're not the first to go through things. The Lord took care of the children of Israel 40 years. In their rebellious state, 40 years, 
rebellious for 40 years, he still took care of them. He still fed them. He still clothed them. I mean, good night. He let their sandals last 40 years. That's pretty good. Their clothes, their raiment that they wore, it lasted a long time. God took care of them, fed them, rained down manna from heaven every day and blowed in the quail from uh, uh, the east, I believe it was, every day. They had bread and chicken. What else do you need? When they run out of water, he said, go over and talk to that rock and get a little more water. They went and talked to the rock. Well, he smit it, sm smoked the rock first, and, and forthwith came water. Uh, sort of like Christ on Calvary. They struck him one time, and forthwith come water and blood. You don't strike him again. You speak to him. That's the example he showed us through Moses there. First time he struck the rock, second time he speaks to it. You don't have to strike him a second time. All you do is talk to him. He's been crucified once. He don't need to be crucified again. Just talk to the Lord. So doubting God's ability to bring us to him brings tragedy. Listen, Psalm 33, 13 says this. The Lord looketh from heaven and beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Can I, can I remind you, God is seeing all that is going on. We must remember that the Lord planned this whole situation. Verse 22, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship. This whole ordeal we read about, the Lord planned it. And he's using this trouble to teach Simon Peter to trust his word. Take him at his word. Turn your eyes on him, not on the storm. Don't doubt his ability. See, oftentimes we, we do it without re recognizing what we're doing sometimes. We doubt that God's going to be able to take us through whatever troubles comes our way. What are you doubting? God's grace isn't sufficient? Are we doubting God's ability to supply our need? Oh, we trust in our ability to earn enough money to take care of the food giving process for our family. Aren't we foolish sometimes? God's able to take care of you. God's able to feed you. God's able to deliver you. I told you about the time that my wife emptied the cabinets, give out every bit of the food we had in the house. Emptied the cabinets to help out a family that was in need. They didn't have no food at all in their cabinets. And she had enough faith to trust the Lord to take care of us. And she emptied our cabinets. Took all the food, canned food, everything we had in there. She took it and gave it to that other family. And we wasn't back in the trailer no time. I don't want to tell a story up here, but I, it seemed like it wasn't just a few minutes. And there was a Crown Victoria pulled up in the driveway, and she popped the trunk. Now, if y'all don't know what that means, Crown Victoria had a trunk in it big enough to, to, to sleep six people. <laughs> they were monstrous. She opened the trunk. She told Judy, she said, here, now don't worry about it. I didn't go out of the way, anything extra. Just, just take this. This is what God put on my heart to do for you. She said, I was down there at the grocery store, and it was a buy one, get one free. She said, I had to buy the one, so I got one free, and the Lord put it in my heart to give you the free one. So she brought us a trunk full of groceries just a very short time after her giving away all her groceries to the other person. Now, the lady that gave us the groceries didn't know the other person was in need. But guess who did? God did. So God put it in her heart since she was in contact with her, and she gave all our groceries away, and God gave us a bunch more groceries. We didn't pay a dime out on getting that brand new bunch of groceries. But see, God knows what we needed. Dr. Goosby told a story here years and years ago in his preaching. He was telling about when he started out preaching, when he started out serving the Lord and left his job. And right, just right after he left his job, their money got really tight. They didn't have enough money to buy groceries for the youngins, and Miss Myra was all tore up about it. So Brother Goosby goes out to the shed or the building behind there and goes to begging and pleading with God about this thing. And uh, within just a few moments or so, there was a car door, and uh, he goes back to the house. The best I remember the story 
And there was a woman there, and she said, I don't know why, but God just laid it on my heart to bring you this. And there it was, what they needed. They didn't call nobody. They didn't tell nobody. But the God of heaven that knows everything took care of it. Now, if y'all don't believe me, I understand God dealt with unbelievers and doubters. But the book is full of situations where God took care of needs of those that trusted him even before they asked for help. Now, listen to me. I want to show you something about this little story here. The Lord is well aware of where we are, what we're doing. Proverbs 5, 21 says, The ways of men are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. I, I thought that word pondering meant to think about. When I think of pondering, that's what I thought that word meant. Well, I looked it up, and what I didn't know was that word in the Hebrew means prepares or makes. Now, now listen to me. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. Without doing any damage to the word of God, I can say it this way, he prepares, he makes all their goings. See, Jesus in verse 22 told the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side, knowing the storm was going to come. He went up on the mountain and prayed like he was supposed to, stayed fully in the will of God, and then he come down off the mountain and he's walking across the sea as the storm is striking the ship. And he is, as you sing the song, he's right on time. He knows exactly what was going to happen here, and he's already on the way. In the midst of their troubling on this stormy sea and seeing the ghost walk across the waters, that ghost is the very Lord Jesus Christ himself walking to a troubled bunch of disciples. He's already on the way to be closer to us before we ever call. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Troubles comes our way, we don't understand what it is. Because we don't understand, we have fear in our hearts. We cry out, we have troubles, we don't know what to do and what the Lord's teaching us. I'm even nearer than you think I am. And right when the midst of this thing is, there's the Lord. What they didn't understand, they thought it to be more trouble to them, turned out to be their salvation. What they thought to be a major problem to them turned out to be the Lord himself. Listen, what we need to understand is trouble draws him nearer to us. That's the scripture. Trouble draws him nearer to us. They cried out for fear. He's coming to them. Simon Peter steps out to go to the Lord to get closer to him, and he gets to look at everything else, and he sinks, begins to sing, and he cries out to the Lord, and the Lord's right there. Listen, he just reached out and got him. He was that close. He was that close. The Lord just reached out and grabbed him and immediately lifted him up. I don't even think he got his head wet. See, a lot of times troubles comes our way to bring us closer to him. Sometimes we get far away from the Lord. We don't realize how far we've gotten until the Lord sort of lets some trouble come our way to bring us back to him. Shouldn't we be thankful for troubled times? Spurgeon had a good message. He preached out of Psalms 50, verse 15. I've related to it a time or two in the past. It says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Listen to the positive phrases in this verse and call upon me in the day of trouble I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me I will and thou shalt God's going to take care of us children though there's some unknown troubles that comes our way there's some things we don't completely understand Trust his word and take him at his word. When God tells us something, it's right. He's never lied and never could lie. Everything he always tells us is right. He said he'd supply our needs. 
Now, some people think they need a new whatever. That's not always true. But he does supply our needs. What we fear in the midst of a troubled time is often God making a deliverance out of a troubled time. What we fear in troubled times is oftentimes that God is drawing us, drawing us nearer to him. Now listen to me. Let's be sensible tonight. Just don't, I know you can be silly about this, but just for a minute, don't you think. What good parent or grandparent hearing a child cry for help would not draw closer? If my kids call me, when, as soon as I finish up, they call me and said they needed some help. Y'all know exactly what I'm going to do. Every bit I can to help them, I'm on the way. Why should we think less of a God in heaven that loves us? Why should we think that we're better than he is? You know what you do. You're going to try your best to help your young because you love them with all your heart. You're going to do everything within your power to help your grand young because you love them with all your heart. And you love them that much, and God loves us the more. So why would we doubt him? Why would we, why would we wonder? Is he going to take care of it? Hey, that's just God. He's there because he wants to take care of us. I talked to us this morning about how he, we're his sheep. We're the sheep of his pasture. That means he's, he's responsible for us. I mean, it's sort of like, Lord, you're going to have to help because you're supposed to. Whether it's grace, whether it's supplies, whether it's strength, whether it's just a word of comfort, he's responsible as our Father to give us help. Troubled times will teach us a lot, even to be thankful for. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the privilege of thy word, the reading, the teaching, the preaching. We thank you for that. Thank you tonight, Lord, for each and every one that's here. And Lord, I don't know what everyone needs tonight, but I know that you do. I know that you ponder their ways as well as mine. And in that, you've prepared. You make the way. What they're going to need, you've already got prepared. Even though we may not know what it is, we may not understand what we're going to do or how we're going to do, we know that your grace is sufficient and your supply is excess. Father, thank you. Have thy will tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you need to come pray, talk to your father a little bit tonight. Altar's open. You come talk to him. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can. God deals with your heart. He pulls. He says to you, come. He does a work in your heart. You can come to him. Ask him to save you, and he'll do just exactly that. How is it with you tonight? You know the Lord? You got some troubles? Look to him. He's got all the answers and all the help. You just mind the Lord. Altar's open. You mind the Lord tonight.